<laughs> Hello. Yes, it's Kim Willis again. And I've got another Facebook Live. This first one for this week. I'll, I'll do two this week. I'll just wait for one or two people to jump on the call and then we'll get started. Uh, it's a kind of a wacky topic. The fickle finger of fate and the freaky focus formula. The fickle finger of fate. Yes. The fickle finger of fate and the freaky focus formula. What's that about? What's that about? Yeah. Well, it's a it's a funny it's a funny title. Well, I think it is. I used it I used it a while ago uh, as a headline for an email that I was sending to my list, and lo and behold, I got a very good open rate. So there's a tip for you if you like the idea of getting people to respond to your messages, start with a good headline. And it doesn't always have to be um, a serious headline. You can use humor in your marketing. So the freak, uh, the freaky, uh, the fickle finger of fate and the freaky fo focus formula. What's it about? Well, uh, I'll share it with you over the next 10, 15 minutes and you'll find out. But I'm, I'm, I tell you something, if you take on board the key point that I'm making, it will help your business. It's something that I've used before, uh, when, particularly when I was getting uh, off track, you know, unfocused, etc. All right. Well, let's, that's just a little intro there. Let's just see who we got. John. Hi, John. How are you? Val. Val from Alaska. Hi, Val. John. John. We've got two Johns. All right. Hi, John. Two John. Uh, John Regan, second John. Paul Edgar. John Small, third John. <laughs> can we can we make it a five? And Bill O'Leary. Hi, Bill. Uh, I don't know about you, but just before I came onto this call, um, I was getting all of these messages on Facebook Messenger from people that I hadn't spoken to for five years. Did you get that? I think it was a glitch with Facebook. It's crazy. I was I'd pop out one after another after another. One of them was 2009. <laughs> Can you believe that? Somebody who had not spoken to me since 2009, their message from back then popped up on Messenger. It was unbelievable. I had like 10 of them happening all at once. Uh, so if you've noticed that, I think it's probably just another Facebook glitch. Normally it gets fixed when, they, when these things happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, Val. Yeah, hi, Val. All right, now I'm not in, a, Val is in Alaska, cold part of the world. I'm in a hot part of the world at the moment, a country called Cambodia. Uh, we cooled down a bit last week because uh, they ran the annual water festival and they run it for three days. They had uh, three national holidays, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And basically they, they uh, run, do all sorts of uh, quite amazing things on the river, the Tonley Sap River. Tonley Sap River is uh, a, an offshoot of the mighty Mekong River system, which Mekong River starts in in um, China and then ends up in Thailand, but it sort of winds its way through countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, and so on. It's a it's a massive river system, probably a bit like the uh, the Amazon uh, in in Brazil, etc. Yeah. So that was last year. So we were cooling down. So there's a lot of water being sprayed everywhere, etc. Uh, and and today we have a typhoon. All right. So uh, yesterday didn't need any fan, didn't need uh, much in the way of air conditioning because uh, the typhoon cooled everything down. So it, it's amazing for a guy like me coming from Australia, where uh, we never had typhoons. We had the occasional cyclone, but never typhoons. Didn't get quite the same extremes of weather, but well, it makes it interesting. That's what happens when you're a digital nomad. Who else have I got here? Hi, Kyle. Good to see you again. Two in a row, mate. Uh, yeah, right. Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Had a chat to you yesterday. That's great. It's good chatting to people all the time <laughs> on Facebook and elsewhere. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into this, this topic of the freaky focus formula. Now, I'm reminded of a little story that happened, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, and I was talking to somebody, and she was saying that fate is essentially, uh, so fate essentially is how she is is the basis that she kind of runs her life on. She accepts fate. She doesn't believe that uh, you can change outcomes. 
so you just accept fate, whatever happens, well, that happens, make the most of it, manage it and try and move on. So she's what we might call a fatalist. Indeed, my mother, my own mother was a fatalist. She used to say that to me, I'm a fatalist. I just accept what happens in life and you know, if I get a, a good card, I'm happy. If I get a bad card, well, I'm unhappy and I'll try and adjust. That's basically it. I cannot control. I'm kind of helpless. All right. Now, I love my mum, but I didn't love that attitude because I, I have a different attitude. Now, of course, there are some things that we cannot control because there is a, there is a certain amount of, um, well, randomness. Is that a word? Life can be random. Uh, we can get smacked in the face by something that's that we didn't expect and there's not a lot we can do about it. But there are certain things that we can do that will help to um, maybe affect our future, produce a better tomorrow, all right? So in that sense, I am not a fatalist. I believe that there are certain things that we can control and if we, you know, if we, we choose the, to do the right things, well, chances are uh, we will have a better tomorrow. So that's the first part of it, the fickle finger of fate. I don't buy it. The second, the second uh, part of it is the freaky focus formula. So what, I've, what I'm basically saying with this crazy headline is that if we uh, choose the right projects, we make the right decisions, we set the right goals, and we focus for long enough, well, chances are we are going to have a better tomorrow. But what I've found is, particularly with marketers, is that we find it difficult sometimes to focus for long enough for the, for the thing that we're doing to work. We, it's easy for us to get distracted. It's easy for us to get off track. And particularly if we're doing something that is going to take maybe six months before it starts to produce and bear fruit, it's very easy to get deflected, you know, over that period of time. So, and I've noticed this with a lot of marketers and indeed I have succumbed uh, many times in the past. I've been marketing for 12 years online and uh, it's, I, yeah, I've gone off on wild goose chases. I'm, I'm happy to admit that. Uh, I was pretty stupid at the time, but that's, that's what happened. I was chasing bright, shiny objects. Now I'm much more focused. Uh, it's rare that I get off track. And if I do move in another direction, it's because I'm much more strategic about, you know, what I'm doing. But I've noticed particularly with newbie marketers, novice type marketers, people who are just starting out, they haven't made much money. Some of them haven't even made their first dollar. Um, others may not have even, may not have made their first $10,000 or $50,000 or something like that. And for them, it's it's a challenge to stay focused it's it's a constant challenge to stay focused and i think that one of the reasons why people lose focus is due to lack of belief lack of belief they don't have enough history to draw on so therefore be, therefore uh, because they don't have enough history to draw on it's easy for the stinking thinking to kind of um, you know, undermine them and get them off track because they don't have uh, a rock solid mental foundation in place. And so I understand it. I get it. I get it. I had lots of self doubt when I first started in the online world in 2006. Lots of self doubt. In fact, I nearly quit about three weeks into my career. Fortunately, I didn't uh, didn't quit, and uh, I started to get some fantastic results. And here I am, 12 12 uh, years later. But what about all the people that do quit? What a shame, what a shame. They missed out on perhaps a life-changing experience and that, that, that's kind of sad in a way. So how do we maintain focus? Now, I, I wrote a, a blog post that created a little report and I, I basically listed out the five steps that I, I take to keep me focused 99% of the time now. It's very rare that I get distracted by, um, you know, non-strategic issues, by, by, by trivia and frivolity. No, um, I've learned how to discipline myself and I use this five-step formula. But 
what I'm what I'm going to do, I won't share all of the points because it'll take too long. You can, I'll give you if you want to read the the full five steps. You want to review those five steps? Just let me know, and I'll I'll give you a link, and you can go and read them read them yourself. But but step one, step one is kind of pivotal. So I'm going to share that one with you. Step one, it's about it's about clutter. It's about clutter. Clear out the clutter. Remove the clutter. Because uh, particularly with if you're an internet type marketer, it's very easy to uh, become cluttered in your thinking because sometimes there's a degree of complexity about what you're trying to do. It's a bit, it's a bit more complex sometimes than doing business in the offline world where, you know, if you're marketing a product or some kind of service or a program, even an MLM money-making program or something like that, in the offline world, what do you do? You just make a list of people that you know and you phone them up. There's not much, there's no tech there, is there? It's just pick up the phone and, and start calling them. But in the, in, the on, uh, in the online world, it's not quite as easy to connect with people. And we've got technology that acts as a barrier sometimes. And uh, there are some strategies that you can use that are far more techy than other strategies. That's one of the things that I do when I'm training new people. I try and get them on to use the simple online strategy, such as Facebook, which is a lot simpler than say blogging or SEO or some of these other highfalutin strategies. So it's very easy. Tech, tech can, um, it can be wonderful, but it can be another reason why we lose focus, we lose confidence, and next thing we know we're out the door, we've, we've quit the industry. Let's see how else we've got here. Uh, but, but, yeah, hi Penny, how are you? Uh, Melinda, I'd like to know. Please share the link. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll give it to you after after the call. Um, Melinda also says I won't be letting anyone else stop me from what I believe in from now on. That's great. Yeah. So it's it's easy to become cluttered in our thinking. So the first thing that we have to do is that we have to remove clutter. We have to remove clutter. Now I'm a great believer in this concept called the prosperity law of vacuum. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, doesn't matter. But basically what it, what it means is that if you create a space for the good you desire and you replace the space, if you fill the, the newly created space with good stuff, with positive stuff, um, you're going to have a better future, a better future. So it's called the prosperity law of vacuum. Create a space for the good you desire. Now, a lot of people don't want to create a space because they kind of love the things that invade their lives. You, you understand what I'm saying? It could be, it could be um, you know, mindless activities. They enjoy it. Mindless activities such as uh, playing games on, on the internet, Facebook or something like that. Um, and it's hard for them to let go of that kind of activity because they enjoy it. They get a perverse sense of satisfaction from it. Okay, I don't play computer games, but I understand in a way why some people are like that. Um, but there are lots of other ways that, lots of other things that we can do that create clutter, like in set, constantly checking our emails. Instead of doing it maybe twice a day, in the morning and in the afternoon or the night time, we're checking our emails every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. Or we're checking in on Facebook. Now, Facebook's good if you're using it for business. But if you're using it mainly for social reasons, it's a bit counterproductive to be constantly checking in for messages on uh, Facebook or other platforms such as Twitter or even Instagram and and uh, play, you know platforms like that. So you've got to you basically you have to name your poison. You've got to list it out. What are the non-productive activities that you're involved with now? Okay, that could be dispensed with at least for maybe three to six months. Okay, because I'm talking about a six-month plan, really. So if, if you want to create a better future, you've got to do some things today. So that's about probably about creating some space. Create that space for the good you desire. So it could be about uh, activities. It could be about uh, people in your life who are creating a lot of clutter for you, maybe, maybe negative people in your life um, that, you know, basically messing with your brain right? So if you've got people like that, maybe you need to, if not, you know, if it's family members, you can't just dismiss your family members, but maybe uh, just don't 
you know, engage with them as often, right? And, and do it for six months. Sure, you love them dearly, but uh, maybe for six months you're going to take a little bit of a back seat. So the people in your life, the activities that you're involved with, uh, the thoughts that you hang on to that are no longer, uh, that are counterproductive, basically, they're no longer serving their purpose, all right? What are some of these issues for you? What are some of the issues for you? I, I used to run a, a workshop and it was called the Prosperity Law of Vacuum. And uh, it was often very well received because we talked about these core issues and at the end of the workshop, I'd get people to make a commitment then and there in front of the other participants, then and there about the things that they were going to let go of. Let go, let go. Bob Proctor talks about let go and let God. So just have faith, in other words. Let go and let God. Let God perform magic. Even if you don't believe in God, believe in something that will that represents a higher power, perhaps, and just let it happen. Have faith that it will happen. Let go and let God. All right, what else have we got here? Who else have we got here? Um, Val, I'm totally uncluttering physically and mentally. Yes, you've given me a few insights uh, into what's going on with you, Val, and that's great. And you <laughs> a Facebook rabbit hole. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, look, I, I, I'm happy to admit that I spend time on Facebook uh, every day, but I'm much more strategic than perhaps um, many people. I, I use Facebook for business. It's never been uh, a, a, you know, a social thing for me, although there is a social aspect, I understand that. But when I opened the Facebook, my, fo my Facebook account in 2000, and when was that? Probably about 2010. Um, something like that, when I opened that Facebook account, it wasn't to connect with friends, it was purely for business. Now, since then, okay, I do have some friends on Facebook for sure, and I've got my family connected on Facebook, that's good. But I'm not spending like two hours a day on Facebook talking to friends, or even 20 minutes. Um, you know, uh, that's just the way, that's just the way it is, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm on Facebook, I'm here to do business and to advance the cause, my cause. I have a cause, yeah, I have a cause. I want people to become great marketers and I want them to have the benefit of the education that I've had. So um, so removing clutter is, is number one. There are four others that I've listed. I'll give you one more. I'm not gonna spend any time on it, but um, yeah, the second one is have a goal, have a goal. And uh, we, I could talk about that one at length, because, but I'll just say this, I'll just make this point. If you've, if you've got something that you want and you want it bad enough, you'll do what you need to do to make it happen. So if we're talking about the clutter thing, we're, we're talking about certain activities or certain thoughts or uh, attitudes that you've got, you've got to let go of them. But sometimes we don't want to let go of them. One of the best ways of gaining the strength so that we can let go of these things is to have a goal, a dream, a vision, all right? And the dream and the vision will pull us forward. So that's one thing. I, as I say, with that, uh, that, that article that I wrote, that, that report that I wrote, I go into more detail about that. So as I said, if you want to get hold of it, just um, say yes here or um, send me a personal message, a personal message. All right, so, but look, the bottom line with this little topic today, this very short, ultra short topic today is about focus, about focus. So if there's something that you need to do to um, fix or address a focus problem, why not take this as an opportunity, use this as a catalyst, this little talk today as a catalyst to buckle down and do what you need to do to create that space so that you can have, uh, so as create that space replace it with better quality activities, thoughts, processes, etc., and then look forward to having a better tomorrow. Okay, who else have we got here? Facebook rabbit hole, yeah, got that. Me too. All right, now, is there anybody here who can identify, come out and say, yeah, uh, I need to be more focused? Does anybody want to uh, chance their arm and just say, yeah, I need to be more focused and I'll I'm prepared to do something about it starting today. Anybody? Anybody? Come on. Let's see if we can get one person to say, yeah, it's me. It's a timely message. I'm ready to go. I want to 
I want to create more focus and get rid of all of this clutter, all of this metal clutter and stuff like that. Okay, anyone? I will say that uh, when it comes to tech, if, you, if you're a marketer, particularly if you're a marketer, and most of the people that I know are marketers, um, you've got to, you do have to, uh, you do have to perhaps look at some of the things that you're doing that may be, from a techie point of view, that, that are creating clutter and ask yourself the question, is there a simpler way of doing this? Because at the moment it's freaking me out, right? And a lot of marketers have told me, uh, struggling marketers, they find they're, they're overwhelmed. They're, for instance, um, I've, had, I've spoken to plenty of marketers who are trying to make Facebook ads work, all right? And they, they're finding that it's, it's scrambling their brain. It's just, it's, there's a degree of complexity with it. You've got retargeting strategies and all of that sort of stuff. And, and because of that, it's creating a huge amount of clutter. And they don't know what to do. They're, they're kind of paralysed with uh, this information overload problem. So sometimes I just say to people, well, why don't you put the Facebook ads thing to one side for a little while and try another strategy, maybe with Facebook, could be an organic strategy, much simpler. It's a much simpler strategy. So sometimes we can find a better alternative, a different way to reduce the clutter. That's just a little practical tip there. Um, doing it as we speak. Great, Val. Great. Clinton. Hi, Clinton. How are you? So we're talking about fate and the freaky focus formula. Freaky formulas, a freaky focus formula. And as I said at the beginning, you may, may have missed this, but that headline, I use that in an email as a, sub, in the, as a subject line for an email that I sent out to my list. And I had one of the highest open rates, right? So curiosity kills the cat. A little bit of humour there in that headline. Sometimes humour works and it helps to attract people to the content that you're wanting them to read. And as long as the content is relevant for the people that you're targeting, uh, they're probably going to get a real buzz out of it and indeed they may click on your offer or, or whatever it is that you're wanting them to do. So there's another little point there about that headline that I use. Using a little bit of humour, a little bit of curiosity and uh, sometimes that does the trick perfectly. All right. Uh, okay, well, look, I'll finish off. The, the, other, the other four points I've given you, well, I've given you number two point. I haven't, haven't given you the big dissertation on it, but there are three other points in addition to the first two that I've, I've discussed or mentioned. So if you want to grab it, just let me know, and I shall give you the free report. Just send me a PM or send me, uh, or just say, yeah, in the in the comments box here. So if that's about it for today, I've got to go and shut the door because it uh, looks like there's another huge storm approaching, and uh, I want to uh, I want to avoid any mishaps with um, wind and uh, rain sweeping into the house. All right, so that's basically it for today. A quick one. I'll be back in a, a few days with another topic. It'll be a marketing related topic based on based on an experience that I had a couple of years ago uh, that turned out to be quite pivotal. It helped to take me to a higher level. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a fascinating experience, a little bit traumatic at the time. So uh, I just want to recount that experience to you, uh, with you because I think you might find it helpful. It certainly helped me a lot and helped me to boost my income to another level once again. I've had all these crazy experiences over the years and sometimes I've been able to uh, leverage those experiences into uh, more business, more sales, uh, bigger audience and all the rest of it. So look out for that. That'll be, that'll be coming along in uh, two or three days time. I haven't decided which day. It'll either be Thursday night, US, North American time or, or uh, Wednesday night. I've got, to, uh, do, I've got to present a webinar uh, in a couple of days, so I just want to make sure it doesn't conflict. Okay, all right, that's basically it. Have a good one, have a good night, have a good day, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of days' time. Okay, bye-bye.